Hi, welcome to Tactical Reserves. I'm Brinks. I'm Zach. I'm Troy. And I'm Chad. And uh, this week we are going to be discussing 9th edition and mostly secondaries. That's kind of the hot topic of the week. Uh, we got in three games. Unfortunately, uh, Anvil is not here. He He's out for personal reasons today. So we'll hopefully have him back in the next week or so. But uh, we're going to go ahead and discuss one of the games uh, that he was in, involved in very briefly. Otherwise, it'll be me versus Zach and Troy versus Chad. Uh, other than that, we really want to talk a lot about the secondaries, and that's that's basically going to be most of the cast because there's kind of a lot to discuss in secondaries, and I don't quite feel comfortable personally discussing terrain until I have a really, really solid understanding of it and uh, opinion that I feel confident in. So hopefully next week we'll be discussing more of terrain and ideally maybe points changes if they actually release that stuff. So uh, let's start with this week in hobbying. Zach, what have you been doing this week? Mm, pretty much the same thing. Just painting on custody bikes. They're looking good, though. They are looking really good. I'm really happy with how they're coming along, but slow and steady. You know what you should do? Throw a picture of them up on Twitter I might so be. we can see them, because they are like crimson and gold, and they're looking dope. How about you, Chad? Uh, this week, I got my third group of intercessors primed and blued and my land speeder primed and blued and still waiting on my repulsor to show up in the mail the first one and i'm gonna get three but the first ones you have to get here right on how about you troy uh i put together my knight that i've had in pieces laying around that i painted forever ago but uh just decided to put it together and it will help me out because i didn't have any instruction or anything just the pieces yeah <laughs> so it was kind of easier than i thought it was gonna be after i looked at it but Yep, he's ready to go. Just needs a little bit more paint. And... He's looking good. I like the rusty chassis. Yeah, yeah that rust effect's really nice. Yeah, yeah I learned from the same thing you did. So, uh, I, I have had a very good hobby week. I got a total of, in the last week, 30 warriors done. I've got most of my finishing work done on my destroyers outside of the little plastic tubes. And all of my tomb blades are now rusted, and I'm working on lighting effects. So I've almost got the bulk of my non-large units for Necrons all painted. So I'm pretty proud of myself. That's a, It's been a hell of a week. I did a, I think I did like a nine-hour grind Monday on 20 Warriors, and they turned out pretty good. I'm happy with them. I wish I could go back and redo my initial 10, but, you know, it is. That, that's how the hobby works. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I literally I, just grind it out. Yeah, well, and by the time you get to your last one, your first one looks yeah. like doo-doo butter. And I definitely have that feeling. Uh, but yeah, all in all, we did a lot of hobbying. We did three games. Um, so, Zach, I just want you to briefly touch on you and Anvil's game yesterday. Uh, I know it wasn't too crazy, but... Sure. Uh, we played at 1,900 points. We're still constantly adjusting on what points we want to play at because we don't really know. So we tried 1,900 last yesterday i played a mono custodies list with a big blob of terminators a couple of shield captains on bikes and a big squad of bikes and a couple custodian guard squads it was a patrol he played admech he played a battalion and a spearhead and his first troops he was using the uh the destroyers the breachers the breachers he's using couple squads of the breachers and he had the disintegrators and the doom crawlers and you know typical ad mech hqs and a big squad of robots uh he uh, beat me pretty bad it was not particularly close he didn't he went first he didn't kill a single model so i thought i was really into this game like i was gonna do great but everything in his army is just like t5 or better so it's really hard to grind through like I ran all my terminators into his big squad of robots and it took two turns of melee to kill him and I just not did not expect that the terminators are really really good and not firm <laughs> and not dying especially the, with the new stratagem and stuff there that was a lot of fun but I just could not chew through all the toughness more than anything that mech list is really really good yeah, it definitely sounds like, uh, I mean, the general consensus has been Admech is good, and he played a 
a pretty strong version of the list, and he's been playing at mech for a while, so he, he had a great... Made a, he even made a huge mistake by going first and taking first strike and not getting it. Yeah. He just yeah. wasted eight points, yeah. and it didn't matter at all. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, and you were playing... That's the first time I think of you played Mono Custodes, right? Uh, yeah, either the first or second time. I'm still really new to Custodes, like... And you have a whole new psychic awakening to learn on top right. of the actual army. Right. So I mean, there's yeah. there's definitely a curve there. Yep. Uh. So yeah, that game obviously Anvil's not here to discuss the other side of it, so I don't really want to get too bogged down in the details. But what I do want to discuss is Chad and Troy's game this week. Uh, do you guys want to talk about kind of the start with roughly your list? You don't have to do it model for model. Uh, the amount of points you guys played and any other details you can remember on the setup of the game. We played 1850 points. Uh, I was playing Ultramarines, uh, Bobby G, two Repulsors, some Intercessor Squads. Repulsor Executioners. Repulsor Executioners, yes. More guys. specifically, because they have the big gun, the laser, is the gun I took. Uh, a few squads of Intercessors and uh, uh, a Slam Captain and Inceptor Squad. Okay. And that was pretty much my entire list. I played Magnus Mortarian couple demons in the bird it was to change yeah it was ridiculous looking on the table the sight to behold for sure very intimidating you played a plague bearer bomb and a uh, blood letter bomb as well right uh not really a bomb i think i had like a small squad of 13 12 something. okay i've decided that the huge squad while well, sometimes is good now that you can't charge everything it's a lot less so i usually just fill out my points with it okay that makes sense my the rest of my points were filled out with two eliminator squads Ah, uh, okay. That was, that was what was left. I was missing. Okay, so who went first? Uh, Chad went I first. went first. All right, and uh, well, just talk about the game. So who won? I did. Troy won. All right, and do you either one of you know any mistakes you made pre-game or in deployment? I did not take the right secondaries. For one, we didn't know that you could only take them. We didn't read the whole thing. Yeah. Or I didn't at least, and you could only take them one from each category. Yeah. So I took two psychic ones, and then early on he knocked out. I actually didn't have as many psychics as I thought, or uh, they were more, I needed them more than, I couldn't really afford to give up a cast. Yeah. So that was a bad idea, and especially taking two, like I barely got one off. I don't think I got the first one off till like turn two or three. But he also took out one of my biggest psychics the first turn. Yeah, yeah, I, I killed yeah. I killed Magnus before he even got to go. Had two entire Repulsor Executioners into it. Yeah. He killed him. Which is helpful because he's they were standing next to Bobby G. I don't think I deployed wrong. I may have uh, when I brought in my stuff from Deep Strike. That might have been a mistake where I brought him in because they didn't really do anything on the plague bearers. They just kind of tink 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 and didn't really do anything. And the captain didn't really do anything. Well, they're plague bearers. That's their job. The fight was on the other side of the board, where one side of our entire map meant nothing. Except for like I'm holding one, he's holding one, and everything else was these three giant demons versus Bobby G and two repulsor executioners. Yeah. yeah. So I guess what were the big points of the game for you guys? I had Mortarian, and even though he killed Magnus on the first time, and I no longer had anything to do war time, he actually moved his repulsor forward, and I was able to charge it still on the first turn. Yep. So that was a huge uh, lucky for me. And then later on in the game, he tried to charge Mortarian and he failed it, which is, that sucks. But he also left Bobby G out in front. So it took a little bit of movement to get my psychers in place to pop him. Yeah. And because, see, the only reason Bobby G was out in front, because of my setup, and when the repul first Repulsor Executioner died, when the second one was about half, I moved it out of the way, and Mortarian got down to one wound. And I fired the entire Repulsor Executioner into him and did not get him. So then I charged a 7-inch charge with Bobby G, who has a plus 2 on his charge to re-roll, and I did not get in there. I mean, it happens. But the first Repulsor movement was definitely not I a should, smooth move. I should have just moved it out. And, or on top of the building. Well, well I, I, I think I've determined how I set him up, because I had him in a corner. I could have just moved it out and back. The sill is in range. And move the second one just over to the right, and Bobby G still could have been in range of both of them. Yeah. Instead, I moved it up to get it out and move the other one forward on the other side and put Bobby in front. And 
that was my big mistake because Mortarian is a house and he does a lot of damage. Yeah, I think, was that your first experience with Mortarion? That was my second experience with Mortarion. Okay. The first so, one... Uh, so you I, knew to respect him. Yeah, I threw uh, a captain for Intercessor squads and Bobby G at him the first time, and he went down, but so did every model. I, I, I interrupted had. and killed everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, well, that was definitely a, a, definitely a key thing. Is there anything else you remember about the game? The swing point is when I missed the charge and didn't get in there and had no shooting, so I charged it with a tech marine and got three hits in and couldn't wound it. Because, But if I would have killed it, there, here's my there, question. I could have charged the bird then at that point. So I didn't get to see this portion of the game, but here's my question. When you shot it with the executioner, right? Mm -hmm. Had you shot everything else that turn? I've shot everything. And did it all shoot at Mortarion? Everything shot at Mortarion. So you did do that and you just couldn't every, get that Every model I had left, this was turn three, every model I had left shot at Mortarion who had one wound left and could not do it. The, report, the executioner squads, both of them, did not do a single wound the entire game. They, they were alive. Yeah. And they, they auto alive. mortal wound on a six. Yeah. They did nothing the whole game. That's rough. That's rough. This week was definitely a week of hot rolls to be discussed in the next game. <laughs> I definitely noticed coherency was a big issue. Oh, yeah. Learning, like, my plague bears were a lot less table presence than they normally are. Yeah. Now, I was trying to be super safe with it. I had them almost triple stack, but it's definitely going to take some getting used to on the they're not going to have the presence they normally do yeah i will definitely say that seeing it because i got to see the start of the game but man it definitely compresses yeah. that whole layout i have to say i did the same thing with an immortal squad in my my army like i stacked them super super heavy because you can't just string them across the board i don't think i made any grave mistakes but when i missed the charge bobby g was out on an island i make that charge with mortarian is one wound i'm pretty sure Bobby G with seven attacks is going to get one in there. And then the whole game would have been different because all he had left on that side of the table is the bird. Have you had... interrupted and fought first? No. Uh, I was... That would have been his only charge. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it changed the whole game when he when I oh, shot wow. my whole side and didn't do one and then failed a charge. I mean, that is the power. I get that some bad rolls, but that is the power of Mortarion. I mean, like he is minus to hit. He's relatively tough, so yeah, he's the, got a good save. So. Yeah, the next turn, he just... And while that was going on, on the other side of the board, my Demon Prince was taking out his intercessors. Pretty oh, yeah. Okay, so there was more than that. Yeah. So you had, he had to divert fire away from the Yeah, Demon he had Prince. his executioners Bobby just on one side. He basically left his intercessors and eliminated, didn't really move, so my Demon Prince was pushing up the left, just kind of cutting through him and taking objectives. I think almost in that in that situation versus his army, like knowing how bad it's going to be to shoot at like bearers and stuff, you might be like best off considering next time you play, like just trying to stack a mega castle around Mortarion or around uh, Bobby G, like all of your intercessors and everything. Well, the first three turns, I you know I took out some plague bear or some uh, nerglings on the first turn, and I got first strike. I got all eight points of first strike because he didn't kill anything on my turn, so I was looking great. I killed Magnus. And then it just, all my Eliminator shots went into that Demon Prince and did zero. So he just, she just walk across the table and not take any damage at all by the time he got into combat. And there's nothing I can do. And the other side of the table, I had two turns to kill Mortarian and just couldn't do it. Yeah. Right on. I mean, hey, sometimes that's how, that's how the games go, you know? I mean, there's... <laughs> Not a lot to be said about it outside of that. That's just uh, the nature of the game sometimes. The bird uh, is also unkillable, in my opinion. It's just tough. I mean, it's notoriously tough, but it's not, like, game-warpingly offensively strong either. So... No, he is just e extremely durable. Yeah. If I could have charged him with Bobby G instead of failing a charge, because that was my decision. Roll a charge at him, which is five, I would get in there, or roll a seven at... Mortarian, because I should get in there with a plus two, and I'm like, I'll kill him, and then I'll this will handle the bird. Instead, I did not, and then Bobby died, and my repulsor died, and the game was over. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where the multi charge thing comes in. Like normally, eighth edition, you would have just declared against both, but now you can't do that. You had to. Make a, I had to pick, make a and I chose poorly. Apparently. Not that I think Bobby G would have killed the bird. No. no, but if I didn't have to deal with Mortarian, 
and was already dead because he would have took one from uh, 45 shots that I shot at him on my like everything in my army shot at him could not do one like yeah. it was just it was just bad luck but he is a unit as a and he's tough he does a lot by himself and yeah I well, respected I mean, that's why the I'm power you spend 25 percent of your points on one model yeah I respected the power and it still didn't matter he's that good so I guess that so that's that game and the the last game we're going to discuss is uh zach and i's game this week and i was playing my necron list we played at 1850 i yes, believe it was 1850 um and i played pretty standard uh list i just trimmed some fat i had to cut a uh, murder boat again and i played smaller units of of warriors or immortals but i did play one large unit of uh warriors and i tried out the um what is it called Canop or it's a it's the freaking I cannot remember the name of this model to save my life. Let me look it up real quick. Zach, you can talk about your army and then I'll go back over mine because it was like the one test thing I was doing. The big spider thing. Yes. Uh, Triarch Stalker. Yes, yes. Triarch Stalker. Okay, so I played the Triarch Stalker to test it with the uh, other two murder boats, and it was not great. I'm not gonna play it again. Um, I'm not depending on how points shake out and stuff like that as of now i was not super impressed with getting to re-roll but having to commit all of my shots that i wanted uh at that thing at whatever it chose to shoot at so i'm definitely not going to be doing that uh and then i played my tomb blade destroyer setup and the list felt good i'm just kind of waiting on points and i'm hoping some of the new models are actually have like decent stat sheets how about you zach i played a a soup of custodies and guard. I'm still really high on the tank commander demolishers. Uh, I was pointed more into custodies for sure. Played the Teleman Dreadnought and some Praetors on bike and Shield Captain. And I don't think I played any Terminators that game. Was that the guys with the axes and the swords? Because you played some of those, whatever those guys are. Alongside the, no, no, the main are, HQ. No, that's just the regular guardians. With oh, swords okay. and swords and shields. Yep. But it's pretty standard. Like I think I took like a a battalion of guard and I used two tank commanders and a bunch of astropath and whatever. And then two shield captains on a bike, a couple of guard squads and uh Tell them Dreadnought, some prayer doors. That was pretty much the list. Yeah. And we did the, uh, I will say the alternating deployment, I do think it is fun. Because uh, we were definitely trying to, like, force each other to show show our hand on where we were going to lay down the heavier firepower. And Tell them Dread started the game in play this time. It did. It did. Um, and it did eight wounds to my track. It sure did. I, did. I didn't kill it. Um, but uh yeah so we did the alternate deployment and i feel like deployment went pretty good i definitely did not respect how durable custodes actually are with my tomb blades and they basically didn't do anything and got annihilated that game but i did roll like the hottest roll of my life so i had deployed on the left side of the board my entire immortal bomb and or my warrior bomb and the anticipation was he was going to come up with his uh bikes and i just wanted them to absorb the damage from the bikes and buy me a turn because it wasn't a huge investment and i was like if it buys me a turn everything else can kind of move away and i can plink them off for the rest of the game and deal with them well he got in there and he dealt a total of i mean he shot him down and we got down to i had four of them left and he had all of his melee attacks and it ended up to where i had to make i had nine saves i had to make and six of them had to be sixes and i rolled six sixes on my save so i was able to next turn reanimation protocol a shit ton of the warriors back and it was insane like out of nine dice i rolled six sixes everybody was watching it, it was it insane. ruined zach's entire plan that turn it, did. It, it, it changed the whole game it did it did because it kept his bikes in combat it didn't give him the kill unit which he had taken first strike you yeah. took first strike so he didn't get to kill the unit it, I mean, it was just, it was very lopsided 
Uh, you don't get the flyers can't fall back and shoot now. So yeah. that one warrior cost me an entire turn of bikes staying in combat, and I can't. The predators don't have enough attacks when he brings back nine models to actually kill all the models. So now it's like I have to take a turn off just flying away from a a unit that should have been dead. Yeah. So that really, really, really hurt. It was insane. Yeah, so that bought me a ton of time. On the other side of the table, I threw away Tomb Blades, which was which was pretty bad. I mean, they did a little bit of damage, but they didn't kill anything. And then we got down to the nitty-gritty of it was his tank versus my destroyers. And a similar thing happened. Basically, he shot all of his firepower into my, my unit of destroyers and got me down to one at one wound. And just could not execute that last wound. And the reason being was when he was rolling damage, he rolled on D3s uh, one, one, one. And those three ones in a row were really bad. Because, like, the first one is kind of acceptable, but then the second one, because he didn't re-roll it, cost him a third die off of it, and he just could not. And then he rolled a fourth one right after that. So, like, out of the six D3 damage I think he had or something, he ended up with four ones and just could not kill that unit. And I rolled a hot reanimation protocol and brought three back the next turn and was able to clear the tank. And I had four destroyers still putting out, you know, destroyers are insane. So at that point, the game was close to over. It felt kind of over in a lot of ways. I mean, had had the, had the immortal or the warriors died, I feel like the game was still somewhat discussable uh, and definitely had he killed the destroyers i felt like we were still in we were still pretty on par because i couldn't really i didn't have anything else with enough oomph that could really execute other than like my uh big murder boats but honestly those shooting at infantry does not feel good and they're d6 shots d6 damage so you don't even know what you're going to get on it it just wouldn't have overall been a great situation to be in but destroyers are just guaranteed to clear unit every turn even even custodes they just get enough volume of firepower that they can just i feel like they can pretty consistently kill something every turn so getting those back and he had nothing that could answer him anywhere close because on the opposite side of the tables where his bikes were and i had used my which we had discussed the week before i got too antsy with my tricks well i held off on being tricksy this time and i veil of darkness my um my my one full unit of immortals onto the other side of the board to clear him off of an objective so basically he had taken my left corner of the board but i had nothing over there and i was on every other portion of the board with my army now so and everything else he had was slow so i was like i can just weather this game and once the bikes come close i shoot them with the destroyers and i just kind of play cagey for the rest of it and it was just like i don't say this very often but i definitely feel like i won that game on the back of two really good uh dice rolls going in my favor as far as him rolling bad on damage on the destroyers and me rolling really hot on my warriors and we discuss should he have spent a command point to re-roll one of the ones but it would have been on the first one it would have been on the second one is when it needed to happen yeah. i mean there there were decisions but, that could have that could have altered that but it was a series of really bad rolls. But, and I mean, technically, he rolled four ones in a row, so that just means he would still roll a one. Yeah, but, I mean, that, and that's the problem. Like, if you spend a command point and re-roll... And get another and one. And get another one... I mean, it wouldn't, have, it wouldn't have changed the game, but it would have been the right play in the game. But do, it, was just, it was just like... He wound up needing to do one more wound, and that could have been the one wound. Yeah. It, was, it was just... Ins- it, it was bad. It was bad. It was uh, definitely a ridiculous... It was just a game of, like... I mean, I've I've never rolled that many sixes under right. most scenarios. Like, I, I got Necroned. I mean, that's what Necrons do. <laughs> yeah. It's like, when that when those kind of rolls happen, and then you get to reanimate that many models, it's just that that's what that army is built to do. And you got to do it twice, which was super painful. Yeah. It but did I mean, feel good. <laughs> I mean, it was... On your side, I bet you were jumping. Uh, it would have been fun to watch. Playing against it was a bit annoying, but, uh... I mean, that's just part of it. You, if you're if you're gonna lose, you might as well lose to the guy that rolled six sixes, like... Out of nine dice. Yeah. yeah. I feel like you have a bad reputation that going up against Necron. And just, yeah. And bring just, him back, like, every time. Yeah, every just time. Just failing to kill the last model. Yeah. Like, you, you think you got it? Like, I, I really thought I had it, and I didn't. 
and mathematically like this wasn't like one of those things where you where you underestimate what you need like mathematically i was very very like over firepowered in the situation and it was just like just a series of bad like i said um, i mean if you roll four damage out of four d3 consecutively it's really bad on multi-wound models when you're trying to kill them and then with reanimation protocols you know it's just it was just insane and like on the warrior bomb i was able to spin the stratagem to reroll ones so i was rolling you know i was getting them back on fives and sixes and rerolling ones and i got back like 10 on ten. the first turn it, it was, was crazy ten. like so i mean I, I i definitely had a game where i broke math it was one of those things i was so glad everybody was standing around watching my roll as an outsider it was the craziest thing ever because yeah. i was like nobody's gonna believe that i just rolled six <laughs> Out of nine, I'm not sure I still believe it, five of them came it. up, and the last one just kind of spun and landed on six because I was standing right next to the dot. I was just, and it was funny because I said it. I was like, "Man, I got to roll six sixes here." Sarcastically, yeah. Even. I was like, that, "That's how bad this is." This is how I win and this I, game. And I like just, and I just could, I couldn't believe it. it. It'll never happen again. Like I got my, I wasted all of my Warhammer luck on a garage game. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh. It was an interesting game. I got a new respect for the durability of Custodes. Um, I definitely kind of gained an understanding of my army actually felt really bad versus I, I definitely felt mismatched, but I just, I won on the back of luck on that game because I do feel like I was in a pretty bad mismatch once I killed his uh, guard tanks. I didn't feel like I was super effective at, at controlling the game from that point had the dice rolled the way they should have rolled. So what I'm going to be trying next time is well we don't need the sawtech dynasty anyway um now because everything can move that's a vehicle without heavy penalties and i get the sawtech dynasty for free so i'm switching to mefrit and mefrit is when you're in half range you get an extra ap so i'm gonna be trying uh warrior bombs with the 24 inch rapid fire guns because i'm thinking 20 or being at 12 inch getting two shots at strength five ap2 damage one is a pretty good gun for you know 200 points in a 20 20 yeah. model unit so you're talking you know 40 strength 5 ap2 damage one shots um and i feel like that's that's also good against marines right yes. like it's not a yeah, it's not it's... a custode specific solution but seeing things that have good saves um definitely made me respect ap a little bit more than i have been because i've been really high on teslas just because if you roll a six, it's two hits. And that's really great, except for things that have good saves. And seven blows. Yeah. Well, I mean, just good saves in general. The other thing is, is the Teslas on the Tomb Blades are going to feel insane because you get two Teslas on there. So, And Tomb Blades are really good at getting in half range. So I'm thinking Teslas with AP-1 on Tomb Blades specifically could be effective. So those are the kind of the changes I'm planning on testing with the army. Depending on what GW actually releases, I did get a Silent King ordered, or pre-pre-ordered, pre however you want to call it. I've got uh, three full Indominus Necron kits, which we're going to build and paint and everything on stream. Um, I ordered the, the weird pylon new thing. So I should have all the new Necrons models. So if you have any questions or you're into Necrons, definitely at least follow me on Twitter. I'll put some pictures and stuff like that up on there. Is there anything you gained from that game other than, like, don't play against the hot nuts rolls. Uh, <laughs> our group's been talking about a lot. Uh, the shield host for the custodies, which one's best? Is on the internet. You read around. A lot of people are really high on the dread host, and I really like the shadow keepers variant, and that's what I've been playing a lot more of. And so we've probably played like six games with custodes now. Um, I think. They have a one CP stratagem, I think it's called Grim Responsibility, where you, after a unit's been targeted, you play it on that unit, and it reduces the strength of the weapons incoming by one. And I found that that's almost another transhuman physiology. It seems good. Like, it's a minus one to wound when you want it to be. Right. I know Amber was saying he definitely didn't like it when he did it again. Yeah, he did not. He was right. not a fan. And I, it's like, between... Not so much in our game, but in the game against Amble, when I was playing the Terminators, they have a one CP stratagem to ignore AP minus one and two for the entire phase. And then you can pay another CP to reduce the strength by one for the rest of the phase. 
So that just makes those Terminators incredibly tanky. Especially if you get the CP back and on a 5-up. I had done the Vexilla teleport homer with them, so they were minus one to hit. But it's wow. just like a really, really durable unit. So I'm really high on the Shadow Keepers right now. I don't think the Relic's particularly great. I don't think the uh, Warlord Traits. I like the Warlord Traits really cool, but it's just not better than what's in the Standard Codex. But the, I'm going to have to play some more with the Dreadhost, but I really don't want to. <laughs> like, I really like the Shadow Keepers. Like, now, what does Dreadhost do? What you get with the Dreadhost mostly is the Warlord Trait gives you Exploding Sixes in an aura. So... What do you mean by exploding sixes? So when when you when you're in melee, any sixes gives you an additional additional hit. An additional hit. Okay, I didn't know if it was extra attacks or hits, like because Morty has the right. So that's why I was concerned about. Yes, and their relic is a flat three damage axe, which custodians really have a problem with D three damage on like all of their weapons. So having a flat three weapon is really cool. Yeah, I could see that. I don't typically take shield captains on foot, so there's really not anybody to carry that axe around. You can't put them on bikes. Okay. And then their 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 stratagem is a one CP one or three CP stratagem, and you can roll three d six if you've come in out of deep strike that turn, and then discard the lowest. So it helps you out of deep strike, which is really cool. One CP for one unit, and then one or two unit. I'd have to look at it. I don't remember off the top of my head. It's one CP for one unit, or three CPs, and you can do three units, three I think. Units. Okay. Well, I I definitely, because we discussed it earlier this week, and I, I kind of forgot the stats on the models, or the differences, but I definitely think minus one to strength is just, so good, because, I mean, you're going to gain the points out of their base damage if they survive. Like, I always, but I always lean toward that. Like, I'm very defensively oriented player. Like, I want to... I would rather get my points over the course of the game than anticipate being bursty, like exploding sixes, especially on a slow-ass model like those guys anyway. Like, they're not particularly fast. So I think, yeah, just being able to walk them across the board and go, okay, bud, you're going to have to take awkward shots to not be affected by the minus strength, right? Right. Or you're going to be minus one to wound. And minus one to wound on models that have two up, four ups sucks. Yes. Like, it, it yeah, I mean, sucks, it really sucks. especially if you're yeah, ignoring sure. AP and your minus one to hit like all of those combined yeah i mean it's a lot to put into your models or into one unit but it is like a 450 point unit while i'm playing yeah so it, it i and that's that's the way it should be and when it gets into melee it's not like they're a slouch without exploding sixes right they're okay like exploding sixes might have got me through the robots on the first turn against amble in that particular game but i use that minus one strength stratagem a lot so well, and that's that, not. Is that just limited to them, or is it any unit? No, it's that a, shares that's that? a custodies unit. But the minus one AP, minus one and two AP one, is definitely just for terminators. Okay, but at least that stratagem has quite a bit of versatility. Because yeah, I mean, yeah. if they like go, they're gonna bring something in to hit a captain. Right. You know, that's significant to just yeah, protect it. Like terminators are T five, bikes are T six. Like minus one strength can put you into a different bracket a lot of the time, and you get to choose like. If it's not good there, then you can play the two CP for the transhuman physiology, which means you can't be wounded on, except on a four or greater. Yeah. So it's basically all you use the minus one strength to do is get the same effect for one less CP. Yeah, and you have two stratagems, so right. you can protect two units. So, exactly. Yeah, that that to me, I mean, I love seeing stratagems like that. I, I love, like, I feel like that's a really creative defensive stratagem. So they work so well together. They do. They well, just... I mean, it's just... I always, especially with a unit like Custodes, because you can't afford to bank on being bursty and not getting that burst damage out. Like, I would much rather be like, they're definitely going to touch something this game than be like, if they touch something this game, it's going to be bad. But the stratagem to come out of Deep Strike in the Dreadhost is really good, and the flat three damage is also really good if you were playing a guy that can do it. I'm going to have to play some more with the Dreadhost just to see what all the fuss is about more than anything, but... I really feel like Shadow Keepers might be the better way to go if you're trying to keep your models alive. Yeah, I could I could see that. I mean, that's totally fair. There so. could also be your meta. I don't know. Like, we do have a pretty killing meta. So, um, and that that could be changed with the once we, we a, learn how to play secondaries. We have a lot of infantry that are shooting strength five guns randomly. So, 
knocking them down to fours is pretty useful. Yeah. So, I don't know. We'll what see about what if you don't take Terminators? Would you rather be Dreadhost? Uh, I don't think you can ever use the Relic then. Like, right. Or the Exploding Sixes. Like, maybe. Like, I don't know. The bikes getting it is okay. But you have to have your Shield Captain there. And then, like, you really want a Shield Captain to be, like, have the five up feel no pain so it's like I don't know it's just really I'm sure I'm it's probably me being bad not seeing it like no. like the Jace the Mind Sculptor when that thing was pre <laughs> previewed like I didn't see how good it really was until it was too late so I'm sure I'm missing like the forest through the trees or whatever but right now I'm really high on the, sh the Shadow Keepers that's all I'm gonna say yeah and I think there could be merit to that I, I I'm always of the mindset of like look at the non-meta stuff because if there's something you should have learned in the last year of warhammer is there's always something waiting to be broken you just have to find it um i know personally i've been looking into like kind of ways to break um uh what's it called when they're all in cohesive, cohesive. like cohesive coherence. coherency coherency. i've been i've been trying to figure out like weird ways to break coherency so like i do think as a as an orc player Something I would very seriously consider is wish boning all or uh, dog boning my entire every single unit of boys I have, just so that I can intentionally get that first unit. If I was trying to play a, against certain uh, armies, obviously it doesn't. It's not a blanket statement, but against every army, to where if they shoot at them, that unit's going to come out of coherency, drop down to below half power, and you could do the unstoppable green tide on your first turn. I tried. I, I brought a slam captain and. An entire Inceptor squad with the point of I'm going to shoot these plague bearers because I don't think this side of the table matters. The fight's over here. I want to see what happens if I break his coherency. Yeah, it didn't I, work, I, but um, like if I just could, can get it to where I kill like seven of them and he pulls the wrong model once. Yeah, but it's Troy, so good luck. But still, like, <laughs> yeah, that was he was thinking about it the whole time. It was. It was one of the key things in my mind for that game. Yeah, like that probably wasn't going to happen. But I think we might see like armies like orcs, maybe Tyranids, where they actually are immune to the coherency or have a different coherency rule, like we've seen with Tau, where they're just completely different overall. And I hope they, I honestly hope they do. I think that would be cool. For hordes, like they're especially immune, nids. Like have a different way that it works, because right now it's really obstructive, those two it is. armies specifically. It is, and I, that's why I was like, I was trying to think of ways to break it though, like ways to break it that your opponent would not necessarily see coming. Like you're not going to as a player, anticipate that I'm hoping you break coherency on my boys mm -hmm. be, on intentionally. Like, you're going to be like, oh, he he doesn't understand how bad the bone is, right? Um, and then the rest of them, obviously, my plan would be protect with grots. Like, that would be the plan. Like, make them pick a unit, shoot it, get it out of coherency, then grot absorb the rest of it. That, that would be my strategy. And then on my first turn, I would unstoppable green tide a mob in from an edge, hoping that you moved somewhat out of your deployment zone so I could come in from behind and to jump another one and just sandwich it. That would be my plan as far as boys go. And then I'm also going to test in my Necrons uh, doing the same dog bone thing with warriors or immortal, yeah, warriors because I can just reanimation protocol them back, but I can area denial my opponents on the first turn and hopefully, because you don't have to worry about morale rolls until or you do coherency after morale so whatever's dead is dead but you still get your units back so i'm always i'm just looking for creative ways and i think everybody should things like trying out the not obvious post in custodes is is good because it may be better than people think i mean if you guys think of anything let us know yes if you want if you've got something broken say let us know i want to hear about it i want to hear what your like ninth edition cheese is i want to hear all about the gouda all the cheese yeah so uh now our main topic this week is the secondaries of ninth edition i will tell you i was not ready for secondaries when we played them it took us it took me 45 minutes between yeah the two of you yeah it, so about 20 minutes or so 20 25 minutes to get them to pick what i wanted and i still don't feel good about my picks the the, only, the main thing i will say before we get into these is you cannot look at these and which one you can score or will give you 15 points a piece 
you need to look at them in which ones can I comfortably consistently score on um, even if it only is eight points uh, I mean getting the max 15 on the ones that 15 is even a possibility is it's not a guaranteed thing it's far from that honestly when you start playing the game so just keep that in mind when you play your secondaries go man I would like to feel like I could confidently get like 32 points on my secondaries like somewhere around there because 45 is that's you've pipe. beaten your opponent you didn't need your yeah, secondaries like you probably tabled dream, them you know yeah, yeah. Uh, i feel like if you get 45 on your secondaries it was a not close game and your secondaries didn't matter so make sure when you're taking secondaries it's not so much how can i sweep this and get the full 45 uh, but how can i get the you know most easily reasonable amount of points. I mean, would you guys agree with that? I, I agree yeah. 100%. You, you want to max out what you can, but you want to take things that you know you can get. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. You gotta... You don't you gotta go out on it. too big of a limb thinking that you can get take all the 15-point ones and then not get there. Like, make sure you get what you... Make sure you know that you can get... What, like, Anvil choosing first strike against Custodes. Probably not an ideal choice. <laughs> no. And that cost eight points. Right. And that cost, cost him eight get, points. No, so, he got so zero he, from it. So, yeah. So, it was, really, so it really it cost, cost him 15. 15. Yeah, he yeah. lost that whole thing. Right? Yeah. And, and so, like, for me, when I played against Zach in my game, I had taken... Uh, I can't remember which three I took because I was, I was still kind of on tilt trying to figure them out. But I didn't get any of my secondaries on the first turn. And they were all 15-point secondaries because I was like, I want these. So in the first turn, I had already lost nine points. From my secondaries because I had taken those in the first turn of the game I was nine points down from max so I'm already sitting capping best case scenario 36 and it was only gonna get worse from there like I definitely was not going to get a few of those probably on the second turn because you just don't realize in the in the way the game changes now especially against customs like I had not anticipated the durability of his models either so there were a lot of factors but just it's crazy how fast you start losing points this way versus how in ITC you could gain those points pretty much throughout the game yes. in a lot of ways. And, like, recon was super easy to get. And because uh, the new one, being six inches away from the center, is much harder wow. as far as being in quadrants. And you have to be holy within that corner. Right? Yes. No, you can't be spreading out in two, two units. Yeah, and my whole army flies, and I still didn't get recon on the first turn. Yeah, they because... took away from aircraft as well. So yeah, just... yeah. It really limited how you can get recon, make it a lot harder. So just it's it's things like that. So let's just go ahead and uh, I'll read them off, and we'll we'll just go. What do you guys say? We just go through the, the whole list. The top, yeah. There's not that many. No, there's, there's only two only pages, like, right? There's only like yeah. twelve to thirteen. All right. 15 of them. And uh, you know we'll talk about them and we'll kind of give our assessment of where we think maybe it's appropriate, and we'll try to keep it brief because this will be a three-hour podcast if we go in depth on every single one. So. First one, and this is in the purge the enemy category. Assassinate. End game objective. Score three victory points at the end of the battle for each enemy character model that is destroyed. I don't think this one's going to be where you want to be in ninth edition. Because everybody's taking, almost everybody's taking single detachments, maybe two. So at most you're going to have two, three, four, like maybe. If you take three in your battalion. battalion. Take and, three in your battalion and, and one more. So maybe five if you did. If you're really heavy in HQs, but I don't see anybody doing that. No, I would not so, anticipate assassinate as being your so go-to. I would guess that if you're going to take assassinate, you're playing on probably killing, probably getting between six and nine points. Usually, you yeah. Don't, don't I agree with that. Yeah, you're just you're not going to get. It, 15 it's ever. not likely to get fifteen just because the, the attachments don't aren't helpful for that. And and personally, I don't think it, at six or nine points assassinates where you want to be characters are easier to kill but if the player's playing right they're still they're still hard as shit to kill so you could probably spend your points in, or try to gain in better places obviously if your opponent has a shit ton of characters for some reason you yeah, know or, or yeah. you come across like big characters like yeah. tyrants and mortarians and stuff yeah then you might be able to pull it off but for the most part it's also, not. like, you know, if you play against Guard, obviously you can you're gonna take your three astropaths. You're, you're going to see three astropaths in the elite slot. Those are all characters, so that's yeah. an easy nine points because they are paper. Those thing. boys go down quick. Yes. Yeah, there, there are obviously exceptions to the rule, but character killing, I agree, in ninth edition is not going to be as... I just expect to see less characters, yeah. so it's I, probably the not... Attachment, the way the attachment is laid out in command points, it definitely uh, 
incentivizes not feels to feels like it's going to be every lost supreme command so yeah, yeah i was going to yeah. say every every chaos list i built had seven characters yes so yeah. it feels <laughs> like it's going to cap you at nine and you'll never get 15 ever and if you well, did you, you might, you're winning. Possibly, there's, definitely, there's definitely lists you just have to evaluate like with all these you need to evaluate what you think you can get against your opponent but just you a, can't have three picked out before the game starts yeah, yeah. just in a vacuum though that's not one that i'm looking to take right. if the opportunity presents itself sure Alrighty, so next one we'll move on to. Whoop, whoop. I scrolled somewhere. I shouldn't have. Um, God. Want me to go? I, I know them all. I got them in front of me. I got it. Bring it down. End game objective. Score two victory points at the end of the battle for each enemy monster or vehicle model with a wounds characteristic of 10 or less that is destroyed. And three victory points for each enemy monster or vehicle model with a wounds characteristic of 11 or more. Okay. This one, I think, uh, I think this one is going to have a lot more potential. I think there's going to be a lot of vehicles think, in this meta. I think this one's actually an improvement over the ITC one because before you could take like a Sentinel or something, a smaller vehicle, and it just wouldn't be worth any points. But right. now, you get at least a little bit of points. What about that tiny little vehicle? That's two. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's like the two. robots. They, that was a good there's six example. robots right. there. Each you kill all those. That's, two points. You know, that's 12, 12 points, points right there yeah. out of 15. Yeah. Yes. And I, I think I think bring it down is something that you need to be like you definitely need to be paying attention to monster and vehicle keywords more than ever uh, because I mean everybody's already wanting to take armor so it's pretty obvious if they bring a pile of tanks like you're gonna want to handle it but I mean at the same time like sentinels and catafron destroyers is that what the tanks are called? I and, think I don't think those, those are infantry. The, oh, those aren't vehicles. The little, Castell and robots. Castell and robots. Castell and robots. Yeah, Castell Castell and robots. robots. Yeah. yeah, and those guys. Yeah, Castell and robots. Those are the ones that, you know, he had six of them. So yeah, it's twelve points. Two of those and one Dune Crawler. There you go. 15. Yeah. yeah. And so, so definitely pay attention to vehicles because a lot of people are high on it. Are your Tomb Blades vehicles, or are they bikes? I think they're bikes. Okay, because that is a little thing that bikes just are kind of immune to here. Yes. Yeah, definitely don't mistake bikes and vehicles. Next one, Titan Slayers. End game objective. Score 10 victory points at the end of the battle if one enemy Titanic model is destroyed, or 15 if two or more enemy Titanic models are destroyed. I think this goes without saying. It's basically, if you play Knights, yes. you take this. Yeah. But I think even if you can get one down and get the 10 for it. Yeah, I agree. Oh, wholeheartedly. Yeah. If there's a Knight on the other side if you don't, table. If there are two Knights and you don't kill one, you lost. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's just like if they only bring one Knight. I, I, yeah. Or any other Titanic unit. Uh, like a Tesseract Vault, I believe. Yeah, Tesseract is so Titanic. if you can grab one and get the 10. And I think it's worth 10, it. At, I think that's worth taking it. I think you take it every time you see a Titanic. Uh, I mean, well, if you, some Titanic's if you, so hard to kill. If you can kill it. If you think you can kill it, I think you take it. Yeah. Like, if I see a Shadow it's, Sword, I'm probably just giving up. I like, mean... Yeah, I don't think I, I... Well, as a Necrons player, I'm 100% taking that. Well, yeah. well, I'm, I'm going to kill I'm that shot. As, as a demon well, player, I'm going to look at it and cry. <laughs> I'm like, going to look at that 10 points. I'm going to get back because my models aren't all painted. So, you know, oh, there you go right there. Yeah, yeah, some of your models are cardboard. Yeah, oh, God. Wow. <laughs> all right. Uh, next one. This is the... Now, that's the whole purge the enemy category. So you one can only take one, one from there. One yeah. Oh, Slay the Warlord. I'm sorry. Slay the Warlord. Score six victory points at the end of the battle if the enemy Warlord is destroyed. Yeah, I don't like this one. I don't either. I think six is too low of a bar to unless, set for Unless yourself. it's an army like maybe Custodes or something where you just don't have that many things you can get. Yeah. And you're just hurting for... But I think you'll always be able to get more. This is six. definitely an F tier. Um, I mean, it should be pretty easy to kill most Warlords, so it's like... It's not like... Give me six yeah. points, but it is an easier six points to acquire. So I mean, if they... you're taking something, if you're taking like a Titan Slayer, yep. and you're not entirely sure you can death kill a knight, then maybe getting the six points here guaranteed. But is you can't it. do that because you can only take one. Yeah, no, no it, take it, one. that's what he's saying. If you're not, uh, yeah, if you're not like out of these, like that should be the last one you look at. I, like I you probably be... like. I think out of all the secondaries, that because it just gives so little points. Six I points, agree. unless they know something we don't, and six is going to be hard to get. Well, I, I disagree. Saying, yeah. If if it's not profitable to take any yeah. of the other ones, then definitely take the yeah. six. Yeah, so it, the way you should be looking at these, in my opinion, is you should start and go, can I take Assassinate? Do they have a shit ton of characters? No. All right, well, how how's their vehicle monsters? Uh, can I take that? Unless their table is 
a bunch of Titanics or a Titanic. Otherwise, if you can't fill in any of those blanks, then you go to Slay the Warlord. But really, settling for six points out of all of these, that seems like a pretty low bar. And but it like, should be the easiest thing to accomplish. So It should be. Unless your uh, just comes with like a Warlord and a couple other models. Then you take it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. If they're playing custodes, you probably just well, have you, to take that thing. I think even custodes are better, but like, what the, can you do better the, against them? the demon warlord that's like fifteen hundred points? You know, they'd be kind of funny. Yeah. But I mean, like, what can you even take against custodes? Like, they don't I mean, play a lot of characters. You don't have to take it out. That's not like. You I guess that's true. You don't yeah. have to take that. There's multiple there. categories. You there, there's more than three categories. That's my bad. So, All right. So the next category is no mercy, no respite. And the first one is thin their ranks. End game objective. If you select this objective, keep a tally of kill points each time an enemy model is destroyed. Add one to the tally. Add ten to this tally instead if the model that was destroyed had a wounds characteristic of ten or more. A model uh, can, if, if, it, if it is resurrected for any reason, i.e. it was destroyed subsequently, destroyed and subsequently returned to the battlefield, potentially add several points to the tally. Uh, divide your kill points by 10 at the end of the round. Okay, easy version. You get a point. You get a tenth of a point for every model you kill. All right, so you need to kill 10 models to get a point unless it has 10 or more wounds. Then you get one full point for it. That's how that works. And if they do resurrection protocols, for example, you can keep killing the same models over and over again and farming them for point one of a point. Which would have been ideal if I hadn't have charged in. <laughs> yeah, still stuck in melee. Yeah. You still have to get 150 non-vehicle models. Yeah, 100 and, and to, get your 50. to get your max. But yeah. all you're really looking to do is get more than six, to make it better than the warlord. Yeah. Now vehicles being worth a point is pretty nice, and it does stack with the because the one as for vehicles, far as I've read, one for vehicles is in this. This category. one's in a separate category. No so mercy, no rest. One and that one. No, I mean like if you take the one where you get points for killing vehicles and you kill vehicles. Oh, yeah, yeah, so they the, should stack. So yeah. it all stacks, so yeah. look for combos you can do. But, I mean, yeah. but for the record, to get six, it's 60 models. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's hard. Now, well, I, of, I pretty much think... armies will have multiple vehicles on top of that. Yeah, once again, if you look at vehicles, I really, it is going to be a vehicle meta. The only thing I think is going to hurt it from being a vehicle meta is vehicles seem very lucrative to kill, yeah. to score points. So, like, that's going to hopefully deter some people from taking them. And, you know... Space Marines randomly get a 24-inch melta attached to a dude, so, like, they don't need vehicles when their dudes shoot better than most rest of the game's vehicles. I'm looking forward to To be fair, their vehicles shoot better than most of the game's vehicles, too. And they yeah, get, that's and, true. And they get new bikes, which, by the way, aren't vehicles. New bikes. Yeah. So, it's just something to keep in mind. Um, I, personally, am not a big fan of this strategy, or of this uh, objective. I think you're setting yourself up unless they're playing like a legitimate horde army if they're playing orcs or nids and they're playing a mob like you definitely want yeah this. even even for those armies that many troops is a lot yeah it is a lot I mean, especially 50 it gets pretty high i think a 10-man squad of intercessors would kill 30 gaunts in a turn easily. right but are you bringing 150 gaunts not now my tyranids are put away. That's right, but if you were, like, like even orcs, well, my old wow, tyranids, 50 is a lot of orcs. Yeah, even if I killed... My oldest, I was taking 180. Even if I killed 30, that's three, three, three points. Well, the thing is, is, like, I'm thinking more around the realms of uh, 80 to 100. Yeah, that's like, more Like, you can, you could get... And, like, the orcs, they have the unstoppable green tide, so 30 of those guys can come back, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of armies have those sorts of effects. As far as I know, I think nids mm -hmm. have... Don't they have a way to get dudes back? Uh, yes, tentatively. And if something you kill has edge. ten wounds, I mean, that's... Yeah, and, and and the chances are most of the armies you play against are going to have one or two ten wound models in there, most likely. Orcs, probably not. Um, I'd say orcs are the ones that probably... Yeah, they're, they're an exception, but you can shoot one full unit of their boys two times. So right there is 60 points, or 60... Six points. Six points. Yeah, just six points. So keep that in mind. <laughs> Uh, that's, next one? Get, that's the bar to get over, though, we've established. Yeah, yeah, we've established the bar is six points. Yeah, and that's only one unit of boys. So if you're playing against orcs, this is probably is pretty safe to take. to kill 60 models or one, one model. model? Yeah. That's fair. Uh, the next one is attrition. Progre progressive objecti objective. Score four victory points at the end of the battle round if more enemy units than friendly units were destroyed this battle round. Now, Zach took this against me. 
was a bad choice. Yeah. But maybe I mean, not if it wasn't for the amazing roles. That's true. You definitely would have killed more so friends. I, I think custodies are on board with this one, except they don't actually kill that much. Don't lose that much either. Right. That's where my head was at. Was at the time. It was like it's going to be really hard for him to kill multiple units in a turn. So I should be able to kill more. And if my demolisher tanks stay alive, and I kill that unit of warriors, we might be having a different conversation. Like, yeah, it might have worked out. I think I would have lost that game if you if if averages would have happened. I'm pretty sure because I gave up those tomb blades to a heroic intervention. That's what happened. The heroic intervention stratagem. Just for the record, like I didn't realize they could just heroically intervene for a stratagem like that and just come up on my dude's shit. So I'm six inches away instead of three. No, no, no. it was three. It was three. It was three. I well, just had was a, he was trying to contest the It point. was a unit that yeah. normally can't oh. Oh. intervene. Yeah, I it just, was just a unit of guardians. But you yeah. gotta be careful with that because they've been passing that strategy around to multiple armies. Yeah, so I, I, but I threw away a unit of Tomb Blades to a bad play and he lost to good dice rolls and bad dice rolls. Like, that was the difference there. So I definitely think that game goes the other way if we just roll averages on dice. Um, because uh, go back to this, it's like uh, I like this one. If I, you if you think you can kill more, like that's basically what you're trying to do. If you if you played an ITC list before and you were getting kill more consistently, you should. This, be this is where we're I at. Mean, are you going first? Do you think you're going to kill more three times? That's twelve points. Well, you don't know if you're going first before yeah. you pick your objective. It's but true. If you kill more two times, you've already beat out the warlord one. Yeah. yeah. And once again, the bar should be eight pretty, to twelve. So I, I think this I one's pretty achievable. Yeah, I, I totally think this is achievable if you're if you're a killer. It's hard army. to kill more four times usually because yes. you've killed everything. If they have unless they have a ton of units, by yeah. the time you get to turn four, if you've killed more every turn, yeah. they're running low. I think if they have a <laughs> way bigger, sometimes it's worth leaving a model or two left yeah. on their yeah, there's yeah. Never yeah. units. If they have a way bigger army than you, though, this is almost good every time. It depends on their. And what are they shooting like against Anvil's army? It's hard to kill a whole unit. And he's really good at killing whole units. Yeah, yeah but he has 45 things on the board when he has 12. Yeah, but he only... He's not going to get killed more on. But he could pretty easily... Here's the, exactly what happened, though, is, like, he could not lose anything. He could nearly lose something, right? And then Anvil only has killed one unit. Right. Yeah. Because his Anvil's army is unique in the fact that it's got high toughness and a shit ton of models on the board. You have to keep in mind, like, they kind of have a few exceptions to the rules. Like, he's not... There are no regular Marines or anything sitting there to take shots, like... <laughs> yeah, everything's T5 and his own. Yeah. But, but yeah, anyway, I think this, I think that we're getting good. bogged down on it. It's, it's definitely good. good. Killmore is always good if you feel like you're killing. Or you're not... Or you're durable. Or you're not... And, or you're, <laughs> you're not killing me. Undefeated. If you're not baby back bitches, or you're, or you're real killy. One of those two things. Alright, the next one. While we stand, we fight. It's an in-game objective. If you select this objective, then before the battle, you must identify which three models from your army, excluding models with the fortification battlefield role, have the highest points value. And make, uh, let's see here, and make a note. That's, it's kind of like make light on Make a note of those three models. All right. That on your is. army roster. If two or more models are tied, you can choose between them. If your army has three or fewer models, then you instead identify all the units <laughs> in your army. A model's points cost includes the points of all weapons and war gear it is equipped with. You score five victory points for each of these models that are on the battlefield at the end of the battle. I think this is a hot garbage. Actually, I think it's a gimme. Well, you, see, you can see the difference in your army. It's like, you play the bird, the bird never dies, so you're getting five points. But it's not the most expensive thing. Morty and Magnus both well, in that army, but the bird would also qualify. It'd be those three, but but right there, I mean, you're but you're already going to be trying to kill your opponent's highest value targets anyway. But you're saving your own. You, you're protecting yours. Right? And, but I thought you had the points for what you killed. You get no. the points for what stays alive. You have to uh, keep your. So that's you why the to, bird is a good oh, one. Yeah, you yeah. obviously want to pick their I, I most. Read, I read it wrong. Yeah, no, no. That I think. I think. If you're saying the most expensive three models in my army are going to survive this game, is is a shit tier choice. Unless you have a bunch of low cost models. I mean, I could just hide my repulsor executioners and Bobby G in a corner and, and not them, do anything. Get them near but nothing and get my fifteen points. Then I killed nothing. I think it's okay in an army like Troy's if he plays the points game right. If he like, plays a bunch of demon princes. If you and stuff. if you get something you can hide, 
and you hide it and then play like the bird that's basically unkillable. That's 10 points, which is pretty good. The problem is that... But you have to play it right. Like, if you right. do, if you put the wrong thing out there yeah. and the plague bears are one of them, you're like, oh, no. Well, I think they would be most of the time. Yeah, it's it's just one of those things, like, I... But they're I also can... hard to kill. They are hard to kill, but they usually mostly die, at least. Yeah. And, I guess mostly dead's not dead, so... And if they're five points, though... They're definitely gonna die. But five isn't six. The same well, way. you're yeah, you're don't. I mean, I think you could say well, I could consist models, not units. So the plague bears wouldn't count. Oh yeah, so it has to be like the most expensive single model units. Yes, in the your way I'm reading it. Yes. Yeah. Um, Which three models have the? So most of the time it's gonna be your characters, unless you're taking vehicles. So like, space marines well, is probably your vehicles, but if you were to take just all intercessors, then your characters. Yeah, like in my ass. army, it would be Bobby and both repulsor executioners, right. and, and those like, have to die. What are the odds? But like an army, it would just be the guys on bikes, yeah. unless they brought the mech guns or whatever. And they yeah. can run, like well, they can hide. Yeah, they can. They can you can scream. You can actually make these guys. It's untarged. probably not a great one. No, I, I, think, I think if I was playing the Lord of Change, I'd take it. I feel like this could be abused. This somebody's gonna uh, break this. I don't think it'd be abused. Somebody's gonna break this that has two up or three up invulnerables, no. and it's gonna be. If it's if you if, if anybody do it, I think it would actually be studs. If your top three most expensive models yeah. in your army are alive, survive the entire game, then you, you didn't need anyone. those fifteen right now, points to win. Shield captains and a the red knight. Right? I mean, you're probably no. right, but no. that's I mean, all. You don't think there's room for somebody to break bike, that? The squad no. of bikes, the squad of terminators. Oh, I, I could I could yeah, totally see just... somebody playing a really low cost. But you run the terminator in there. You model right, like the, the army. The two captains would probably like it. And try to tuck characters the whole game. But then your whole game is revolving around only 15 of the 45 possible points you could score. Right. Because you, know, you like, have to alter your... to build your whole army around. No, no, I agree. I, I think it's... I think, like, you could bank on getting five points out of this yeah, consistently. Yeah. All right, next Move up. Along. Next up. First strike. In-game objective. Score five points at the end of the battle... Uh, if any enemy units were destroyed in, the, destroyed in the first battle round, and score an additional three victory points if more enemy units than friendly units were destroyed in the first battle round. I think this is fine. You can only get eight out of it, but I think it's an easy eight to get most it of the is. time. Not every time. It's a tricky eight to get. Yeah. I Well, okay, so in this category, right, let's, let's confirm this. In this category, yeah, you only get, in their ranks, attrition, while we stand, we fight, and first strike. So, so if you were if you had to choose from this category, unless they have a horde army, you're not taking thin their ranks or a bunch of over ten wound models. Right. All right, attrition. I think if you think you can kill more, more than just the first turn, you take attrition, right? Because then, it, I mean, if you do it two times, like it's your eight you points. Gotta do it, you gotta do it basically. You three have to times do it three times for to it to be better. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you think you can do it more than once, you take attrition to hope you can do it three times. Yeah, that's probably fair. Um, and I don't think you take while we stand, we fight. Like, I think you could always get first strike if you're that kind of army over while we stand, we fight. Obviously, if you're a super defensive the army, you maybe take, you probably don't take anything from this. I just don't think there's a scenario where while we stand, we fight is going to be I don't know. super strong. I'm not real sold on the first strike one because you only get one turn to do it. And sure. you choose your secondary before the game starts. Make so if, if, if you choose it against me, Every one of my units is going to be either out of line of sight or in cover. And, you know, it's going to well, be as maybe, hard. Maybe it's worth sacrificing I'm gonna, those points to get you to play defensively. Right. Like, but play you're. Go, I'm going to try to. I'll, like, I'll take an extra turn to do my stuff and pin myself super deep to screw you out of one of hey, your points. entire seconds. Yeah. No, that's solid. Like, it is so definitely you game really. Over. Like, you have to be really careful. Make sure right. you can kill something. I definitely think if you're taking the from this no mercy category, you probably just want attrition most of the time. You want to be able to kill more. Yeah. And if you think you I can think kill it's more the safer ones, ones. Yeah. Because like if you have like if your opponent cages you on the first turn, you have turns two, three, four, and five to to try to get more. something. Yeah, get something. Whereas you take first strike, you just if they do that to you on the That's first valid. turn, you're done. That's valid. So, so I'd say attrition is probably number one in this category. Thin their ranks, maybe number two or first strike. Kind of those two hover thin in the their middle. Thin ranks is only going to be good every once in a while. So thin the ranks when it's good would be number two. Yeah, but like, most when it's good, it's number one. Well, most yeah. time you're not going to take it. Yeah. I, so I, really, I, this is just an attrition. This is just you just want to if you can't kill more, you ignore this tree. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, well let's move well, on. That's the no mercy tree. So yeah. Sense. So the next one is battlefield supremacy. 
Now we're already on the second page, so we're already halfway through these. Uh, engage on all fronts. Progressive objective. Let me get zoomed in on here. Score two victory points at the end of your turn if you have one or more uh, units from your army fully within three different table quarters. I did not read that correctly when I was playing it. And those units are all more than six inches from the center of the battlefield. Score three victory points instead if you have one or more units uh, from your army wholly within each table quarter. Those units are all more than six inches from the center of the battlefield. Yeah, recon. It's recon, um, but you can get two points if you hold three. Now, I did not pay attention to that the first in our game. It didn't matter. I, like... I was playing on tilt, and you were playing on tilt. But this one does allow aircraft. It does allow aircraft. I did not. Yeah, so this, I, I engage on all fronts, Is it's recon. Like, okay. recon is good. If your army is mobile, this one is solid. Yeah, yes. it's, it's solid. Three. I mean, But the six inches from the center is big. It can be. That is a big change to It, it is huge. Big. Like, no, that's definitely a huge deal. And, but and it makes it a lot easier to get, but you're only getting two points a turn, so you kind of have to do it. It makes like, it harder to get. Uh, only having to be in three quarters, though. So. Yeah, well, three quarters is definitely because you start. You're two. only getting two points a turn, so. Yeah, so you're not gonna be able to max it out doing that. But so I mean, you feel I feel like you get eight to eight points off of just do holding three. Right. I mean, that's that's kind of the the minimum. The fact it that it is, works with aircraft, which I didn't think it did when I first read it, makes line it a breaker lot better. doesn't, which is next. Oh, okay. Can this even get to fifteen? Yeah, if you get three every turn, you don't score until the start of two. Well, you can score no. second turn zone for yeah. This one scores at the end of the battle round before and, and, you do your turn. And it has turn. the okay. it has the capacity to get fifteen, which is but you have to do it every turn. But you have to get it every turn. You have to be in all yeah. three every turn. But it, four, you you can four. consistently feel like you could get eight per game out yeah. of this. I, I agree. Right? If you're I think you can get eight every like time. if you're playing scouts or nerglings, you can be in all four quarters before the game starts. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this is this is like an A plus one if you're an army that can utilize it. Like right. you should definitely be taking. Like if, you, if you can deploy out of your own deployment zone, or if you're super mobile, this yeah. one's an auto. You yeah. should definitely have this. All right, next up, line breaker. Score four victory points at the end of your turn if two or more units from your army, excluding aircraft, are wholly within your opponent's deployment zone. Now this is just four points. Period. I think this one's tricky. I think you don't take it. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to take. It's really hard to pull off. Uh, not only is it hard to pull off, pull off it's four points. That's every right. turn. Oh, it's every turn. I'm sorry. But still, you have to do it four turns to get the max. Well, yeah. And but I think you get... in your opponent's deployment zone four turns. Yeah, in their points deployment that zone. <laughs> that's the Fully catch. in the deployment zone. Yeah, I mean, that's all how the way. plays. Like, if I'm not in your deployment zone with my entire army by turn two, I'm not winning that game anyway. But for most armies, that's not where you well, want to be. I mean, I'm... if you're playing the army that's in the business... Yeah, and that's where you want but to be. You can't, you can't normally, play though, like on a normal army, like yeah. regular stuff. No, but probably it, but, not. Where but you would be. you take that over engage on all? That's fronts? what I'm saying. I think you. I think even if you're nids, you just take engage on all fronts no, and bank on there. getting the two to three a turn and you're not have to be wholly within their deployment. And you zone. can't play on just deep striking two units and hoping to get max points out. Yeah. of this. That's not going to work most of the time. No, I mean, yeah. like so specifically fun. talking about like tier nids, yeah. like you're putting. A squad of gene stealers in their line on the first turn, and then you're putting a swarm lord, another squad of gene stealers, and anything else that you can get close. Yeah. The next turn, like you're gonna have the majority of your army in their deployment zone by turn two. Yeah, yeah, we've been there. Yeah, yeah, we've been there with like that. when we were doing ITC yeah. missions, and you had to pick where second or where it's objectives like you go, go anywhere on the table you want. Yeah, I would put my objective that I get to put down as close to their deployment zone as possible because that's where I'm gonna be. Yeah, I can see that. Um, so. Outside of a very, like, very specific case, like, even then, you would probably, I would say you would argue conservatively to maybe consider engage on all fronts oh, just for the consistent two. I, I think the behind me lines is hard to get for most armies. I think it's probably oh, yeah. I think be, if you're not, yeah, yeah. if you're not nids, it's you can't, probably you can't just be like, I'm going to destroy two units and grab this. No, and for sure. It. You're right. Yeah. So the last one in this category is domination. Score three victory points if you control more than half the total num a number of objective markers on the battlefield at the end of your turn. I think this banks on two major factors. One, how many objectives is your army capable of holding if it's got six? Mm -hmm. And how many objectives is your enemy's army capable of holding? And you'll yeah. know how many objectives there are before you're picking your secondary. Right. Yes, at least. yeah. I think this one's just almost completely dependent on... How many objectives are and how big your opponents are? If there's not at yeah. least like five objectives, this no, is... No, no, see, I mean... Uh, you can't look at it like that. Yeah, I think, I think like, 
if there are five objectives on the table, this becomes a lot more appealing than if there are six. Yeah, holding because three. holding three is way easier than holding four. Right. Holding five, four is... I holding. think on six, you probably never pick this. Six is going to be the hardest one, I think. Yeah, I, think, I agree. You probably I never pick But, but I think six. you only take this if there's five. I think, I think, you, I think once bad, again... Six is bad. Four, I, think, I think once again, if you feel confident that you could hold three objectives, you should probably just take engage on all fronts. Just I, in case you can't, I you agree. go back to those two points per turn minimum. And you're gonna get your eight points. I in think game. it's just the best of the three. I, it's not close. You guys had four objectives last night, right? Yes. And those two objectives were pretty easy to get and hold. The two outside your deployment zone. They but you gotta hold even. more than half. But you gotta have yeah. more yeah. than half. Oh, yeah. Hold so the one in your deployment zone and two outside Once your again, deployment you gotta zone. hold three, but But if you just hold the ones outside your deployment zone, which you can fight over, but it's not that hard to pull off. This I is at the end of your turn, right? Yeah. I think but I, I, I would argue in that, like, you probably would be getting two points a turn minimum. From engage on all fronts, and you not have to bank on having to hold that that objective. Yeah, I mean, if you're good at holding objectives and they're not, then sure. Yeah. This one. yeah. But it's just one of those things. I would say line breaker is the worst here. Domination is for specifically for armies that are that are durable, that can get to objectives. Because if you're banking on holding more objectives and they know that, and you're not durable, they're probably going to shoot you off of it. Um, I really think the consistent one, if you're a mobile army, is probably going to be engage on all fronts just because it's it's an easy, consistent two points, and that's kind of the minimum bar is the eight. Um, and the ceiling is 15 for that one. That's such a good ceiling, and it's pretty attainable to get to 12 if you're a mobile army. Like, if you feel confident in eight, 12 is not... not yeah, insane. It's the best by far. It doesn't... You're not winning the game, like, outright. If you get twelve, like it just means you you stayed in your you corner. You do what you're table. supposed to do, yeah. Yeah, because a lot of these, I feel like, if you get max points, you won the game no matter what. Because you probably bet, basically table. This one is not that case. It just means you were cagey, and I do feel like you're gonna have to play cagey anyway. So we'll move on. Uh, Shadow operations. This is the new next category. We have invest. Now these are these I have less opinion on because I'm still not sure how I feel about them, and they're fairly wordy. So bear with me. Investigate sites, progressive objective. Score three victory points each time a unit from your army successfully completes the following action. Investigate site action. One infantry unit, excluding characters from your army, can start to perform this action at the end of your movement phase if it is within six inches of the center of the battlefield. And no enemy units, excluding air aircraft, are within six inches of the center of the battlefield. The action is completed at the end of your turn. Now, I believe if somebody can check for me, taking an action means you don't do anything else, right? That's what you do. That's your, that uh, you don't shoot. You don't shoot when you can't charge. You can overwatch, though, right, if you spend this And if you get charged, you can fight. Yeah, and you can yeah. fight if you get charged. But you can't charge. So... I think you can still do sagging abilities. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, we... Uh, I'm not sure if we'll know that answer by the end of this episode, but I will post it in the show notes. So I will have a little show note for this answer if we don't get to it before the end of this episode. Um, so the feeling on investigate the sites. Uh, I play. I took this objective. I hated this objective. It is real easy for your opponent to go, I'm within six inches of your infantry, because your infantry are not exactly high output, right? And, like, what Zach had done was just walked his derpy-ass Telemann Dread up within six inches of the center, and You're not he was dealing with other stuff, and my dudes just couldn't couldn't take it. Like You're not going to send, like, a squad. Even, you wouldn't even send, like, a squad of ten guardsmen, hypothetically, up against something like that. Well, no, the and they're going to die. Well, I mean, now, see, I would be way more inclined to send ten guard way more inclined to send ten guardsmen up there for that turn to get my three points. What you got, Troy? Action. A task a unit is attempted to perform starting and completing as specified by the action itself. Unit cannot start to perform an action while in engagement range with an enemy unit. It cannot start to perform an action if it advanced or fell back. Aircraft and fortifications just can't do it. Characters cannot use or abilities while performing an action. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, action failed if unit is destroyed or it makes a normal move, advances, falls back. Manifests psychic power, shoots, charges, or performs a heroic intervention. So it just can't do anything. It literally just walks up there. can fight back. Yeah, that's it. about it. Okay. And... Uh, Psyching actions are a little different. We can get to those. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in the Warcraft category, but keep that open if you don't yeah. mind. Yeah, I got it. So, investigate sites. I am not a fan. I think it's very easy to counter by just being within six inches. Like, you can throw just random things down there. Now, I would be more inclined to throw Guardsmen up there 
get my three points and let them die. But then I'm also saying I gotta throw a whole unit at the center of the battlefield all game to get three points. That's really bad. And the unit you're throwing up there. My you, units you, are way higher value, but they can't, still can't kill anything super durable. So if he just walks a something dreadnought up there that's super durable, yeah. your guy is just standing there getting blown off the table. Yeah. Because it can't do anything. Yeah, so I, I do not like investigate sites. I think they need to fix it. Um, I think if you investigate sites, now if you do it within, if there's a big terrain piece in the center of the battlefield and it makes a minus one to hit, maybe you could talk about it. But they still, your opponent could just get within six inches of it and yes. turn it off. Like, it's so easy to turn off. It's so, like, an afterthought to just turn it off that I feel like it's not great. I don't know. What do you guys think? I feel the same. I agree. I don't know if it needs to be fixed. Like, there's ways to achieve it, and there is merit to having drawing your opponent out, making them come to stop you. That's true. You, they do have to come out like, to Like, some armies, like Space Marine armies, they have a few units they want them before, but most of them are just going to sit in their opponent's zone and shoot you. Now, if you dictate that to them, yes, you give up some of your secondary points, but if you think you can beat them, without them then it's definitely worth thinking about yeah i mean they do have to come out there and take care of it or you're just like, going to get three points like, and if they're just in an intersection squad you mow them down and make them send another one that's true i i i personally just think like you're kind of there are a lot more other secondaries you could take throughout this book that, that feel much more reliable um but there are probably scenarios for this if your army ha if your mo enemy's army has a low model count and they're not Super durable? I'm not sure what that would be, but <laughs> that sounds like a terrible army. It but, does yeah, good. it's not great. So the next one is Repair, Teleport, Homer. I've not even read this one before just now. Progressive objective. Score five victory points each time a unit from your army successfully completes the following action. Repair, Teleport, Homer, action. One infantry unit from your army can start to perform this action at the end of your movement phase if it is wholly within your opponent's deployment zone. The action is completed at the end of your next command phase, provided the unit attempting it is still wholly within your opponent's deployment zone. It's rough. That's that's hard. I think this one's actually achievable more than the the two in your enemy deployment zone. I think because late game. You only have to do it for three turns. And you can throw uh, like a throwaway unit and deep strike anything now. You get like a little unit over there and put it in a building. You, if you can put it in a building, or if they don't have that many units to cover the whole deployment zone or something like that, you can hide this unit and then it becomes do I really want to sacrifice whatever it would take to go over there and kill this unit? Or do I let them it? get five points every So yeah. then, this is again dictating the movement yeah. of your opponent. And if you can like, like uh, against Anvil, that whole back area behind that <laughs> building was almost. It would take almost two turns to get back there and shoot something. Or an army so like get Tyrion points that's up. in there anyway, just take something and well, push it. Well, are everywhere. I was thinking more uh, jump pack guys, like Blood Angels with yes. Sanguinary yeah. Guard. or Captain And they're durable, yeah, too. But these, remember, he can't do anything. Right, that's sustain. what I was thinking. I was like, that's rough, because you're like, deep strike my Sanguinary Guard, put my Captain right here behind him, and then don't reroll ones because his aura is off. Yeah. Well, Seems rugged. I, I definitely I will say I agree with Troy. I like this one definitely better than then investigate sites. Than investigate sites because I th I don't see it as three turns. I see getting two turns and ten points out yeah, of it is, points is out. totally viable. Well, it's five uh, points a turn. Five points yeah, a turn. I think it's probably worth it. Yeah, like, like you might even take like a cheap jump pack librarian. Right, that's what I'm saying. You can throw any, anything. Any, you want to go small, I think, for the most part, because he's not gonna be able to do anything. And it doesn't say non-character. Yeah, the other just, one says non-character. But it's got to be infantry, right? It does have to be infantry. Like, so you can't just, like, run a bike no, back there no, or something. No. But you can just hide this guy. Right. Like, if you go the smaller you go, the hide, like, put him on top of a building, in a building, like said, you know, anything like this. And then all of a sudden you're just getting these these points. You're like, I'm going to score five. And your opponent you knows they have to this. deal with it, but they don't have an easy way to deal with it for the most part. Well, I mean, it's far away. And they're going to know that you've picked that, so they're probably going to screen right. you out of their But that makes them play really yeah, they bad. they have to play completely different. But you can grab this in the last three turns of the game. That's well, true. That was what so I was thinking. They think about it first turn. This one might actually be. But if they're thinking about this for three or four turns, then you've already And not having to bring in your deep strike on the second turn, you can wait till. Yeah, I, I, I actually think this Wait till this turn has, four and bring it in and put well, it in a building. This one does have potential. Yeah, it has I, potential. I don't know if it's good or not, but... Yeah. Like, I could just save one of my crappy Astropaths and just deep strike him back here. Exactly. And then turn three, drop it in. Put and it if in. it survives... And the wind would blow and he would die. Yeah, but if it survives for just two turns, that's... <laughs> that's I mean, that's pretty... That's ten points. That's, no, that's a, a lot that's harder a, to do against anybody that has non-line-of-sight fire. 
or super mobile units. Yeah, like, aircraft, any kind of aircraft or anything that can swoop in there. I think that one's got more potential than I originally gave. I think that would pull this one off against Marines. Well, that would be something. ridiculous against your army. What? This? Yeah, because he runs out of. But he's also got like the bird that, and Morty. If he's alive, or Magnus really. can move. Yeah, he's going to if, if he's taking he Morty back that there. Over yeah, that's true. Do he's winning. Yeah, that's that's valid. So I do have demon princes that sit in my deployment zone. I don't know. I don't know if it's easy, but. Well, it, I, I agree. It has plays. So the last one in this category is called Raise the Banners High, and this one is very wordy. It's a progressive like it, and in-game objective. If you select this objective, then units in your army can perform the following action. Raise Banners action. Uh, one or more infantry units from your army can start to perform this action at the end of your movement phase. Each unit from your army that starts to perform this action must be in range of a different objective marker. That does not have one of your banners raised upon it. Uh, it says C below. A, a unit cannot start their action, this action, while there are enemy units excluding aircraft in range of the same objective marker. This action is completed at the end of your turn. If this action is successfully completed, that objective marker is said to have one of your army's banners raised on it. The banner is removed if your opponents control the objective marker at the start of any phase. You score one victory point at the end of each of your command phases and one victory point at the uh, end of the battle for each objective marker on the battlefield that has one or more, one of your banners raised upon it. So basically each turn you hold it, you get it one point. If you have it on two, per objective, if now, you have it on two objectives, you, two you could get easy eight points out of it. Now here's the thing: if you're playing that, then we go back and we say, okay, like if you're playing, this is one of those situations where you go, okay, well I'm playing that, so maybe that's one of the situations where I play, um, what was it, um, domination, where you want to hold more objectives than your yeah, enemy. Combine you want to the combine other. these things yes. together, and that's that is where. You can go, okay, well, domination, I already have to be on these objectives, trying to score points. The tricky thing about this one is you can actually just leave the objective after you raise the banner. That's exactly right. It's yours until they get to Until it. they go. Yeah, that's true. Go but ahead. I think if your plan was to go to objectives and place banners, you might as well just sit on them and plan on rocket but domination as well. Now you could abandon the one in your... I mean, I guess you still have the primary objective. Yeah. And the primary objective probably wants you to... I think this... I think... I personally think uh, the teleport homer is better. I think 10 points in two turns feels way more achievable. I think it's splashy. I think this one's has I think potential, this, I especially think this in the good. six. It is I good. Think I do think good it's good. Too. Especially yeah. in the one where you start with six in your deployment or close to Yeah, that's true. When you start with six, this gets really good if you've got the uh, troops to take care yeah, of it. And, it, like, and it doesn't say non-character, so characters yeah, can do it like, as well. Guardsmen are really bad. Any right, infantry, you're right just like... Edition, so you're just like... Yeah, and you can run, score three points. Run those guys out like, there, set the banner up. Oh, you shot them off, but you do not walk to the objective right. yet. So I still have yeah. the banner. That's one, two, like, yeah. one, two, three. This, yeah. this does seem good if you have the support, especially with six objectives. I think if you, there are four objectives, this not gets a lot worse. It's a little tricky. But that's obvious. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. obvious. With, with six objectives on the table, this always has to be an option. Yeah. I, I in agree. General, if not, as long as you have units that are willing to take the turn off. Because even with the four, that because you still have to take a turn off. Yeah, you do. So that is the thing. You do still take a turn but off. If you have a ton of units and you're. Well, uh, yeah, but my division so far is kind of incentivized not having a ton. Yeah. Of units. Kind of the way the game is going. So I'd say out of these, um, if you're the kind of person that can do the teleport homer, I think that's a good consistent ten points that you could try to eke out of your opponent. If you know you if you know your opponent is gonna come at you and can't easily get back, that's a really good strat. It's definitely the most back and forth with that one, like where you're trying to out High risk, opponent. high reward. Well yeah, and you, yeah, you're really? trying to it's like almost a chess move how you're trying you to say play it them when you're and announcing your objectives, they're like, Oh, Okay, yeah, now the they entire have to, game changed. The entire yeah. game just you get in their head just from by picking even, this one. Even just picking it. Their entire strategy yeah. changed because they have the whole time be thinking about what you have. I will say, after really reading through these and discussing them with you guys, like I do like these secondaries a lot more than I did when we were just trying to pick some before our game. Because yes. there is a lot of play to them when it comes yeah. to mind fuckery and stuff like that. So yeah. I'm actually excited about these. Yes, and all the missions are all the missions and maps are the same. So it's like after a while, we're gonna know exactly where all the right. objectives are. So it's gonna get really technical. Yeah, I, I'm excited for the. I'm I'm actually genuinely excited for this because that definitely reading through these and hearing you guys with your opinions on the play of them, uh, definitely exciting. So we're gonna go to the last one, 
and it is Warcraft. And these are all the Psyker ones. So the first one is Mental Interrogation. Score three victory points each time you successfully complete the following psychic action, Mental Interrogation. It's got a warp charge of four. One Psyker from your army can attempt to perform this psychic action in your psychic phase if it is within 18 inches of enemy character models. It's gross. You think that's good? It's gross. A warp charge of four. But you have to be within 18 inches of an enemy character. Yeah, if you're playing Chaos, you're... It doesn't say line of sight, though. No, it doesn't say Just line of sight. Just within 18 inches. If you're playing Chaos, don't act like those guys are going to be 18 inches away from anything. They're going to well, be in the business. You are sacrificing a spell, though. And if you're playing Psychers, like, a lot of times you're living on the back of those spells. That is true. So... I mean, maybe, yeah. But if you're playing, like, Thousand Suns, every unit can... Yeah, do multiple. Well, your opponent can still attempt to deny it. That's true, too. And it says here you can't do it if you fell back, but you can't do any psychic powers now if you fell back. Yeah. What's the so cheapest like Grey Knights and Thousand Sons that like every unit in their army can do those things? Like these right. ones get especially powerful. Yeah, I think if you play one of those two armies, you're always going to take at least one of these. Yeah. Well, you can only take one. Right? Yeah. So we'll figure out which one. We'll see which one we think is best. Okay. Um, I think the, in my opinion, I think that one's good. You I mean, think it's I mean, good? I mean, I mean, it's, a lot of people will run forward with their characters, or generally, like you said, chaos is pushing forward, and you, 18 inches is still. Pretty far, like you can get. You're out of midway. Have you have the dawn of war set up where the middle, middle of the table get this? Yeah, this that's off. true. That's fair. I, that's fair. Maybe it's I. It's not maybe 18 I, inches line of sight. It's within 18 it's inches. Not line of yeah, yeah. It doesn't say line of sight. So that's. <laughs> it's just within 18 inches. You, you can just, hide it. Hide it. I said, asking this dude some questions over the warp. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so the next one is uh, it's called psychic ritual. It's an end game objective. Score 15 victory points at the end of the battle. If any unit from your army has successfully completed the following psychic action three times during the battle. Psychic ritual. Warp charge three. One psyker character from your army can attempt to perform this psychic action in your psychic phase if it is within uh, it's cut off so many inches of the center of the battlefield. I would assume six. I would Probably assume six, six as well. How do you feel about that? I think it's terrible. Terrible. F. I don't know if it's terrible. I think it's bad. Cool. You have to have one guy go within six inches of the middle of the battlefield for three turns for three turns not get killed and do nothing no he doesn't do nothing he can still do his other cat the, yeah the problem with this one is you have to do it three times three times so if you do it twice and then i kill your dude you have to start over with a different model and i'll have to do that twice and then you can't and it's anything. all or nothing no so it's, that's going to become a high no, I priority I don't think, target i don't think i don't think the reward's worth the risk now can you take like three psychers run them all up there and do it with each one of them nope you can't do as far as i know you can't do the same psychic power this falls under that yeah and it says that um that was my if assumption. any unit had completed it three times unit so one unit has to do it one three times so like you run a demon prince up there I let you do it twice, and, and then, then I kill your demon. Murder it. Yeah, and now it did nothing that whole now game. Now it's too. turn three, and you have to start over, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. the max you can get Once from you it is... the bird up there. Well, yeah, if you're playing the bird, then it's probably worth it. If you're playing the bird, that actually really increases its value. I think you still take the character. But I think you'd rather just cast, like, uber smites. Right? Yeah, which and is the problem I ran into when I played Chad. Is right. You need, like, if you're playing those high psyker units, most of your other stuff isn't that... I think this one's worse on the first one. Agreed. Agreed. I, I I would say that. I think it's flashier. Score fifteen. Yeah. You max out. I think. I mean, I do I think, think if you just glance at them, that one, you're like, okay, fifteen. I can get fifteen. Like, Boom. Done. If you can get, like, you guys are thinking just running the side up to the middle of the table, but if you can push to the middle of the table with a portioning army, you can still screen that sector. Like, if you just take yeah. a little herald or you know, you know a little library or whatever. But if you can control the middle of the board for three for, turns, for three turns protecting a unit that that is a high value unit at that point, like it's something because, that people because we know you well, just took this and you're going to do it once with that guy. Here we are again, where you can dictate your opponent's movement. You but can I, make them come to you. You can pull them out. But in this scenario, I feel like in the other scenarios, you're dictating them to stay in their deployment zone or have to leave engagements here they're moving where they want to go if you're anyway. a big psychic or everybody army, wants to run to the middle if you're gonna if you're moving at all you're going towards i the miss middle. i mean i guess if the psyker he runs out there is the great unclean one you know well, also if you look at you want to the go table, up there and fight that guy heavy line of sight blocking terrain 
He runs the bird and the great unclean one up there. And... Well, I think I do think there's actually some play to throw in something like the bird up there because it can do other psychic shit and that power. Yeah, it's two casts, right? Yeah, anything with multiple casts, it's a lot easier. To well, and the off. bird is so, so bad to shoot at. So, yeah, like, even if you unkillable. sacrifice 15 points at, at the bird, like, say they do, you guys yeah. kill the bird, like, the amount of time your opponent's wasted shooting the bird. To yeah, not get those fifteen but points, you can probably run up, run up and hide behind the wall like ITC always has in the middle, you know. And then you just like they have to come so far around to try and get him, and then you can catch him on the flanks. Like it's definitely. Well, I don't think ITC is always going to have it too in the risky. Either. Like if you if it doesn't work for you, because well, you're agree. probably not going to be within six I inches agree. on the first turn. If you build, so up. you're not starting till turn two. So you have one shot at it, and if they get blown off the board, then you just. You can't get anything. Yeah, if you if you get it on turn two and get it on turn three and it dies on turn four, it, like you can't get it. You have to do it three times. Yeah, I you mean it's a high risk, high reward. Well, they start on turn three. Correct. Three, four, five. You but by it. then, the middle of the board is either cluttered or. Like, I just think it's too risky. Like if you lose your model, then you lose the game with it. Right. You, you lose fifteen points for sure. Like, I'm not. It's definitely not something. An army with one or two sagas is going to take. You're going to have. I mean, a bunch if of you build an army and around this, maybe. I'd yeah. much rather. I think there's that's one of the goes back to the mind fuckery play. Like if you're after kinda... after talking about it, I'd much rather try to do the teleport homer one because that keeps you in your own deployment. Right. And it makes you turn around and run yeah. backwards. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, Instead of being in the middle, like, you could do both because both of them are require you to put a unit out there that you you're banking on. But you could but you could announce you... both of them. Yes, <laughs> but the the one at the teleport home so one, like it's not tied to one model. Yellow game ever sure. to one action. So. I'm going to control the center and and you your also, corner. But you also have to deal with this too. Pick one. They're just doing the Looney Tunes. Look back and forth. What am I doing? To go to. All right. Last but not least, abhor abhor the witch. End game objective. You cannot select secondary objectives if your army includes any, any cyber units. units. Score five victory points at the end of a battle for each enemy psyker character that is destroyed and three victory points for every other enemy psychic character that is destroyed. Correct. Well, it doesn't have all the wording. Every Let's other see. enemy psyker. So you get five points if it's a psyker character and three points if it's just a psyker. Okay. Okay. Got it. All right. So, so abhor the witch. Uh, if you're playing against, like, Demons or Grey Knights or Grey Knights yeah, or Thousand, Thousand Sons. Uh, I think you definitely take that if I you don't have psychers. This is a good I mean, too. most of your characters. Are I have no. Yeah, mids. I have no psychers. So yeah, if you have no psychers, like you obviously. Well, that's you have, you look yeah, at this. like you only have access to it. If but you if you bring yeah. out like a Tigurius or a Librarian, you suddenly yeah. can't take this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. I, like I, I think that one's good if you're playing against certain opponents. Otherwise, I don't think it's that great. I agree no, as well. No. Like I think it. it yeah, it's opponent specific and army specific. Like a lot of armies, even if you only have access to a uh, psyker or something, you generally gonna take them. Like Space Marines are still probably gonna bring one. Yeah, they can't. They can't. Necrons aren't though. Necrons. <laughs> it's definitely gonna it's be like appealing with my Necrons as psykers. About it. Yeah, the armies that inherently don't have psykers, because if you have there. access to psykers, there's probably a psyker that's worth playing. These it's a very powerful. One. So Admech probably takes this one a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, if they're playing against. Somebody that has like your characters. Yeah. So and I think the investigate one, the uh, or interrogate ones, hands down the best one in that category. It does yeah, seem sure. it does seem good. It has a much larger bubble. So as far as a safe, uh, I think the general, area of effect. I think our general consensus is over the ones that aren't super swingy, but you can yeah. do consistently. You yes. get, if you can average eight to ten points out of all so, your secondaries, you should be able to win the game. Right. Yeah, and that and once again, that's where your bar should be. Is like, like I think, other than Slay the Warlord, like six is you. You've looked through all of these, and you said, well. and you said, I can't get eight on three of them. Then you look at Slay the Warlord. That should be a last resort after you shuffle through everything else and said, I cannot get eight on three of these different ones. Like they go. have no vehicles, they have no characters and no yeah. titans. Like, like there are scenarios where that's going to happen. Like, people sure. are going to build armies to make these objectives bad. I have, right? I Especially have no vehicles and two characters. And if you bring a ton and... of troops, then you can easily do the banner one. Yeah, you yeah. Deny the middle, and you've got psychers probably. So there's definitely ways to outgame these and kind of dictate what your opponent and can do. And you always know what each mission's 
deployment and objectives yeah. are going to look the like. Same. So you can look at all of those and kind of go, okay, well, yeah. for my army's construction, these are the things that I feel I can if, do. If one, three, or five happen, then... Like, I feel like you definitely need to build your army to where you're like, I'm going to bank on being able to do two things and then have the third one flexible and that's like your balls yes. out one. I agree. That's how I build most of my ITC list anyway. Yeah. My it's, like, it's like, I'm, okay, I'm doing line breaker and recon or whatever. Or and not my new army yeah, and I'll pick the best rich. one versus my opponent. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a good way to be. And I know that that to, to a lot of people seems like common sense, but it is something to think about. And it's something to think like, because I definitely just picked three. I was like, these say I can get 15. <laughs> that's what I'm picking because I'm going to get 15. I'm Spend some you. time, read on them, think about them because... When you first look at them, they are kind of like overwhelming, or at least they were to me. You need, yeah, to, you need to evaluate what your opponent can do and what you think. Well, you need to off. you need to like, read through them a couple times, make sure you understand them, and then look at your own army, right? And pick your two that you think you can do consistently, and then like we tried to do all of it at once, and it was super. It was a lot. I feel like I was on tilt before the yeah. game started, <laughs> and I like my brain legit. melted. Yeah. before we got started because it was just too much yeah and, and i made wrong and the decisions i made were bad yeah like, I, I felt really bad about that game like everything felt off yeah it just was it was a rough one so um i know it's it, this went kind of long so we'll just we're going to cut it out right here uh let's go ahead and we're gonna i got my question for you guys next or this week is which one of the secondaries were your favorite Please let me know. I'm curious. Did we, did we evaluate a secondary badly, in your opinion? What, you know, kind of hit me up. And with that being said, my social media is I'm on Twitter at LLBR1NXLL, and I'm on Twitch um, almost every day of the week, really. Check out my schedule. It's a BR1NXL, and we are still doing Monday Hobby Nights. Feel free to come in there. We basically all came to uh, the conclusion that Constantine is a bad movie. Whoa. So whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> that was not okay. so. So I came to that conclusion. Everybody else disagreed with me. If you disagree with me, come tell me. Um, Zach, what's your social media? I'm on Twitter at Mr. Finger Guns with a Z at the end. There you go, Chad. Uh, Twitter, Twitch, uh, Instagram, everything at Chad B. McKenzie. Troy. Uh, my Twitter is at uh, Viking Hard On. Awesome. And we do have a Facebook page that is Tactical Reserves. Please hit us with a like there. Talk to us on there. Um, Email the show. I do please. content creation full time, so I will definitely respond to you. Uh, I hope you all have a good week. We'll see you next week and uh, be safe.